Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, I'm on behalf of Imtech. Um, I work in our consultancy arm rather than our sales arm. So I'm not going to talk to you about selling equipment. I'm going to talk to you about some of the services we've been working with our uh, customer base. We were on Thursday a point, well, announced that we were Juniper's EMEA partner of the year. So our slide deck is out of date. Didn't get a chance to change that. But we're also Juniper's UK and Ireland operate specialist of the year, and that relates to our service and consultancy arm. We work, the team I work with primarily work with the Juniper portfolio. Okay, so um, although we do work with Cisco, our engineers are trained for both Cisco, Juniper, and other vendors as well. Our engineering team is mainly project focused, so our engineers tend to be tied up for several months at a time. Uh, my, my last uh, few months have been locked in a darkened room, so I haven't seen a lot of people for ages, so I apologise for um, the shaking in my voice, possibly. Okay, we all specialise in routing and switching, but we've also got areas of interest that we work in. Okay, so my, my area of interest at the moment is uh, porting E-Series broadband into the MX platform. Okay, so I'm working with some of our service providers in the UK, uh, from both the wholesale perspective, from a wholesale provider and also from a wholesale uh, customer deployment of how we're getting next generation broadband features to work. So you'll have heard earlier that um, the expectations of everybody now has increased. So things like two megabits per second service at home now is something that is um, fairly low speed. So everyone's expecting the 20 meg broadbands, which is put a lot of pressure onto the broadband platforms. So I'm working with a couple of the providers at the moment to start generating or start working on the next generation platform. So we have to support the current infrastructure, plus we have to be able to support the next generation services, so the fibre to the cabinet type services as well. So we've got some very, um, very heavy constraints on our cost modelling to support every type of customer that's out there. Okay, we're also working with uh, deploying seamless MPLS backhaul. So we're integrating some of the MPLS features from Junos into bringing back uh, MSAN connectivity from, um, from remote locations. So a quick overview of the MX as a product, a very quick overview. Okay, the MX feature set will work, or the BNG feature set will work from a very small MX5 Okay, for right up to the very large MX960 platforms. Okay, the larger the platform you work with, the more scaling numbers you get and the more performance you get. So we're now, we're now talking, in the, in the sort of larger platforms, we're talking about the hundreds of gigabits per second performance for broadband platforms. Okay, these platforms natively will support PPPoE, they'll support LAC. Okay, the, uh, the, the caveat for deploying these features is you will require a scaling license. Apart from that, you'll be running a Junos feature set, but I'll explain a little bit about the Junos feature set in a moment. Okay, there are features that are available, L2TP, LAC, LNS. Okay, LTS is actually available at the moment, but not in a supportable version of codes, but it's available in a code version that you can test, make sure you're happy with, okay, before deploying in a supported version of code that's still to come. Okay, the, hi the hierarchical quas, Okay, it is available on all platforms from the MX580, uh, 580 series, okay, all the way through to the MX960. It requires the queuing and enhanced queuing chips. Okay, there's only an option of four or eight queues per subscriber, so offering a subscriber solution based on one queue per subscriber will eat four queues per subscriber anyway, so you might as well offer a differentiated model. Okay, the, these services are defined at the PIC level. Okay, the higher the number of queues you get, the less number of subscribers you get. The, the modeling for uh, the platforms is based on a maximum number of queues per slot. So the more subscribers per slot, the less, oh, sorry, the more queues per slot or more subscribers per slot, it's, a, it's basically a, a one offer or the other. The LNS feature set takes advantage of something called inline services in Junos. Okay, it's fairly, fairly new, but takes advantage of some of the MPC technology. So um, developing services based in the forwarding plane rather than in the control plane. Okay, these 
the LNS feature set anchors itself to the queuing NPCs. So you can actually bring in subscribers across standard ports okay, and take all the queuing functionality off of the queuing NPCs. Okay, there is a license required for LNS, okay, which is in addition to a license that you would require for subscriber termination. Okay, if the MX960 will support up to nine, up to, sorry, the MX960 will support up to 128,000 subscribers with eight queues per subscriber. Okay, the h cores modeling, okay, I don't know how familiar everyone is here with Junos. Okay, maybe some people are, maybe aren't. Okay, the E-series platform that I've worked on previously used to be more Cisco-centric, okay, but had some very quirky things around cores. Okay, uh, the MX style um, of um, cause is employed fully within the uh, BNG feature set. So things like traffic control profiles, classifiers, rewrite rules, schedulers, okay, sh interface sets, schedule maps, they're all part of the hierarchical cause for the MX. Okay, so what does that mean? That means there's no real huge learning experience. If you're familiar with Junos and you've worked with cause, Okay, you can use those skills to actually start working with uh, the MX in BNG mode. Okay, there are some good learning materials out there if you want to get into Quas and want to get into Junos. Okay, there's a very good book by O'Reilly on the Juniper MX series, which has got some really useful shell commands in there. Okay, they're very useful. Not always Juniper would recommend you run them on a production box, but they're very useful for uh, learning and understanding how the platform operates. Okay, I'm also working with another provider uh, with a seamless MPLS product. So that comes in officially a, a version of code which is 13.3 R3, okay, and that's for MSAM backhaul. Okay, that takes advantage of the tunnel services capabilities of Junos okay, and enables up to 2,000 pseudo wires per chassis, enabling you to take uh, MSAM backhaul directly to the uh, MX BNG platform. Okay, the H cores for pseudo wire head end, okay, it uses the same functionality that we use in the LNS. Okay, we, we work with our partners or work with our customers and partners to develop services. So whilst I've been working with the two providers I'm currently engaged with, okay, we're working through enhancements with our vendors to develop the products to suit their environment. So one, one I'm working with uh, make, takes advantage of NAS port IDs to lock subscriber uh, to a particular line. Okay, we're um, developing with Juniper to enhance the NAS port ID within uh, the pseudo wire head end termination or seamless MPLS product in order to uh, allow them to migrate existing services or legacy services to this new platform. Okay, radius integration. Okay, there's a new VSA for, um, for Quas, okay, which Juniper um, this is the main difference between the E-Series and the MX. So basically, if, you, if you're porting from an E-Series to an MX, we take advantage of a new VSA, which gives us all of the uh, cause capabilities, things like the traffic control profile, scheduler map. We can pass those all back from Radius. Okay, so the supported code versions. Okay, the Junos code versions for the BNG branches, okay, forked. Uh, on 11.4, so there was a specific broadband release for 11.4, which was an X27 that's still being developed now. Uh, Junos 12.3 R3 and above is a supported broadband release. Okay, so R4, R5, uh, and carrying on. 13.3 R3 is where the 13 branch will come in, so that's going to be a few months away before the 13 branch is officially supported in, um, in Junos. Okay, and that will have the new features like the pseudo wire head end termination as part of that code release, and also LTS if anyone uses LTS. Okay, so that's, that's um, what I've been doing in a darkened room, not answering questions from anybody for the last few months. So if anyone has any questions, I'm okay to take them, or if you want to meet and have a chat over coffee, that's also fine as well. Tom Moynihan Gamma. Hi, Dave. Hello. 
Uh, quickly, with regard to the split on the code trains, um, is there any tie-up between, uh, obviously you've got a, a separate BNG code train, but is there any tie-up between the uh, be, 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 between the, the same versions of the code train? So in actual fact, you could say, well, okay, I've got something running in, in, within the core my network. I want to look at the BNG release. I, can, I, I know that a particular code release will have all the features in that I want, uh, but just with the additional uh, BNG features in there. So is there a different timing, do you mean? Or? No, no, what I'm saying is, is, is there a tie-up between the, uh, after the split between the different code trains, yeah, okay. is there any tie-up between the, the basic releases? Yes, so the 12.3 code releases, 12.3 R3, R4, uh, GA releases for Junos, so if you run MX, MT series platforms in your core, you can be running those versions of code. They just are also supported for the BNG features as well. So something like a 13.2 release, Okay, we'll have BNG features in it, but those that won't actually be an officially supported release for BNG by Juniper, although you can test the features. And that, that code release is supported for all other routing and switching functionality. Just for BNG, it's not actually an officially supported release. Okay. Okay, any other one? Oh, David at the back. Sorry. And then we will be breaking for coffee. Hello, uh, David Freeman from Clarinet. Um, I'm, very good presentation. I noticed um, that the MX has had uh, this sort of code in it for quite a while, perhaps a, a few years maybe now. Um, I'm really surprised to see there's still no LTS functionality. Um, I mean, that's quite a basic feature. I would have assumed that would have gone in earlier. Uh, yeah, I don't work for Juniper, but yes, <laughs> uh, it's something every one of our customers has been calling for. It's going to be in the 13.3 R3 release, so it's a few months away. Uh, it is in 13.2 at the moment, and I have tested it on behalf of the customer to make sure it actually, it actually works as expected. But yes, uh, I'm surprised that it took so long, but um, I think Juniper really concentrated a lot more on the... Uh, backhaul type services than the L2TP LAC LNS type functionality initially and I think they're catching up with LTS being the last bit to catch up on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much okay. David.